My name is Bill Haley for the Facebook page called Competitive Military. I want a government reform that we're going to um, switch the monopolized, more socialist uh, model of military to a more competitive military, bring free enterprise benefits into it, better representative, a lot more societal oversight, still having the commander in chief elected by the people and having a better election system, having better representatives, <clears throat> a lot of stuff going on here. Um, so let's go through it. Competitive military and free enterprise military is, does not mean a free for all or without standards and without a structure. This has significant structure, significant societal oversight, a better free enterprise way of um, attaining military um, capabilities, and um, but still elected leadership for the use of the military. Let's go through it. I'm gonna go. This is gonna be my longer um, overview, maybe 12 minutes or so. I'm, I'm caring for. Um, so let's go through it real quick. Um, competitive military, it looks like I have about a dozen um, bullet points. Let's go through each bullet point. This is, and I um, also have a st structure of the competitive military on my website that is much more broad, that takes in many, many more reforms and um, deals with a lot of stuff. But this one's just going to be pretty much competitive military reform by itself. Obviously, we have to have a little bit of um, other reforms coming in. But let's just go through this structure. And if you want a greater structure with more government reforms, you can go to Haley2024.org and see see a lot of um, writing on that, a lot of videos on that. So competitive funding based on capabilities. So my goal is to have roughly 50 different major military corporations. Um, and they are funded with a military budget. And everybody gets the, every all the 50 get the, um, get the uh, percentage based off their military capability. So um, I want between 1% and 10%. So nobody's allowed to go to over 10%. If, you're, if you if um, you think you have over 10% of the military, split the two military corporations and get um, 11 or 12%, I mean, um, 6 or 7% each or whatever the case may be, whatever you have, just split into two. Because we don't want any one military corporation to get too large. But we also don't want it to be too small. But we also allow the smaller ones under 1% to exist to make uh, under one of the big military corporations um, doctrines or uh, um, umbrella groups. So we can have a consistent uh, oversight for them. So let's go through it. So the, the competitive funding is going to be bring free enterprise into it based off capabilities. There's, there's going to be a model there. I'll just go over it. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to go over every last thing with it within this, um, but there's a lot more on my website to go over. The missions authorized um, by missions authorized by a 70% vote and controlled by elected commander in chief. So we don't we we still have a um we we for outside American forces outside of America it takes a 70% vote. I want to go to a 70% democracy. That's another one of my reforms. But this doesn't have to happen. But um. But to, to do this reform, but it's an additional reform. Anything outside of um, um, protection of American soil, American um, citizens, takes a 70% vote. Um, by, by, and um, controlled by elected commander-in-chief. Everything's always controlled by elected commander-in-chief. Um, one part of a citizen's responsibility is to help protect our country, country from foreign foes. That is a fundamental part of having a country and being a citizen is you have to be part of the responsibilities to protect our country from foreign foes. That's just a given in a citizen's responsibility, in my opinion. All sales taxes would supply the military capability system with 5% of GDP. So I know we're not quite 5% of GDP right now. 1% um, of GDP or 20% of this budget will have to be put into a fund for major military operations if a war is declared. So we're gonna go with 5% on, on the normal um, circumstances to run the normal military, just to have it ready and um, waiting um, for the need to have a military. 1% of the budget per year, 1% of GDP, 20% of this overall budget will have to be just money set aside um, to help ramp up um, weapons capabilities at the time a war is declared and have that funding for um, 
extra funding for the military personnel and the like to really go after the enemy that we declare war on. Okay, uh, so that's just, a, that's just part of this. Okay, war outside of American borders requires 70% vote. Again, that that's an additional reform I want to bring into it. It doesn't have to be into this, but I wanted to bring that into it. Um, a war against enemies attacking American soil uh, um, is constitutionally ob is a constitutional obligation of a commander in chief, even without a vote. So make sure they don't abuse that. There's a lot of systems, over, a lot of oversight systems to make sure the commander in chief does not abuse. Everybody has a boss. The commander in chief, especially, has a has a boss, and that boss is American citizens through a representative system, and forty percent of the um. Set representatives of 40% of the people can take a commander in chief out of his power. Um, they have to put somebody else in there, but um, if somebody starts going um, uh, bad or corrupt or um, compromised, we, we need to have ability to um, pull them out. Military corporations, um, which is going to be called M MC, um, uh, these are um, one of the 50 or so. So must have at least 1% and not more than 10% of the overall military capabilities, thus resulting in roughly 30 to 50 military corporations. So if you might have several that are seven or 8%, one or two might be above 9%, uh, but once they start getting that 9%, they're probably gonna um, split in two just so they can have growth um, available to them. Um, and then there's gonna be a lot of them gonna be in the one to two, 3%. If you get too low below one, on that threshold, you probably have to join together with um, another one, another sim similar one, and um, stay above that 1% um, threshold. So we don't want people right there at that 1.1 1 .1 and, and below. So anyway, there would be a lot of systems, a lot of logic around that. So that, that's the size of the military corporations. These are defined as MCs, military, military corporations. Now, I don't want to um, confuse it with a regular military corporation that is supplying um, military capabilities to one of these major corporations. So I want there to be small military corporations, let's say a tank group of um, 100 tanks, 1,000 men, um, <clears throat> maintenance personnel, and the like. It might only be, let's say, it's probably not accurate on the percentages, but let's say one-tenth of one percent. They have um, a lot of capabilities there, but one-tenth of one percent. Well, one of these military corporations can hire or contract with that military corporation, um, the smaller one, the military business to supply that. Now, everybody has to be um, have oversight. Everybody has to be approved. Um, there's a lot of oversight, a lot of um, structure around that. So let's keep on going. A military corporation's only product is providing military, military capabilities to America. If somebody chooses and uh, applies to help another country, um, one of our military corporations, um, one of our allies, they can apply to America, to the overall board. Hey, we want to help protect this small island. Um, they, they are doing the right stuff. We are we have good relationships with them. And if the commander in chief and the diplomat, uh, dip, diplomats and the Congress or whatever you want to call it, the elected officials say, okay, you can contract with them to help protect them, give them some services then that's a possibility. But their main uh, product is providing military, military capabilities to America. And um, there is some side business with some of our allies if the um, situation is correct and we, we can um, have it under control. Um, MCs are not authorized to use military powers outside of the commander in chief. So they their product is, their business is to provide military capabilities to America under the rule of the commander in chief, elected uh, commander in chief. So they they are not legally allowed to use their um, their product um, outside of the commander in chief's duly elected, duly authorized commands. Now that's a big word, big phrase there. Duly authorized commands. They have to be proper commands. They have to have a war declared or people attacking American soil or within the guidelines um, surrounding that those couple phrases there. Um, there would be guidelines from the Congress, from the diplomats, from the commander in chief. And um, if somebody starts to abuse it, we have the societal oversight group that can take somebody out, take the authority away from somebody in an instant. Um, we have 
we have mechanisms, a couple different mechanisms actually. A distinct CIC commander in chief is elected to be just a commander in chief. So when you elect your president, you're, you're, you're gonna elect just the commander in chief aspect of one person just to be the commander in chief. So he's still elected, but he has nothing to do with the currency and education and EPA and all those other stuff, um, taxes. He doesn't have anything to do with that. His whole sole job is to, how do I command the uh, military to fight off foreign foes? MCs, military corporations, make all the decisions on labor, contracts, um, weapons, systems, the trainings, and other choices regarding attaining a military force. So military corporations have a very broad authority to make their decisions on on all this stuff. They, they could do what they want to do, obviously without creating negative externalities and within broad guidelines of not not doing wrong. Um, so they, they can do a lot of stuff. Obviously there's some limitations on, hey, now you're, you're, you're going beyond our, our ability to um, control what you're doing. We have to have oversight. There's, there's oversight over everything. Um, so there's, but outside some broad areas of way off to the edges that they, they get to make their weapons contracts uh, weapons, they, they get to attain their weapon systems, their aircraft carriers, their planes, their fighter jets, their long-term bombers, their um, nuclear weapons, all this stuff. Now, obviously, a lot of oversight and a lot of structure around each one of those to make sure things are staying safe. Um, and again, only the commander-in-chief can order anything. And duly elected commands down there to other um, commanding officers. Um, again, any commanding officer can be pulled by societal oversight very rapidly and people are, um, people, everybody from the enlisted men to the um, highest people in the um, government or in the military, they have to know who, who can give commands and when it's bad. So they all, they are, they are all trained on that. Uh, if, if the system goes in uh, a distinct representative body elected to handle military spending creates a capability determination system. They want a separate elected body strictly on the issue of distributing the money to the military corporations and not just distributing the money to them. It has to be based off capabilities. So they might say, I want 8% of my money going towards tanks and military armored vehicles. 6% um, of my money going towards satellites. 5% um, of my money going towards um, nuclear weapons. 15% um, of my money going towards aircraft carriers and, and the like. Um, six percent of my money going towards the Air Force and um, capabilities doing something. I mean, they get to break it down. So, um, and then all the military corporations get to make their decisions on whether they go after that portion of the budget. And then they look at all the military corporations and say, "You have six percent and six percent of this uh, budget. You get six percent of it." So. Overall, you're going to have, um, let's say, 7.2% of the um, military budget. And you get, uh, let's just say that's a trillion dollars. So 7.2 is, um, what is that, 70, um, seven, 70 billion dollars. So it's a lot of money, no doubt about it. 7% seven, um, 7 of a um, trillion dollars is a lot of money. Now, it's not going to be quite that high because we're going 5% of GDP. And yeah, 5% of GDP is roughly a trillion, but... It, it gets knocked down kind of quickly because we have to save some for um, long term, um, long term from declared wars. So you have a um, pot of money ready to go when there's declared war. So we don't just go into debt or um, have to tax heavily. <clears throat> the capabilities determination program will likely assign a specific percentage of the budget to particular categories such as planes, tanks, ships space among others needed needed capacity. I just talked about it, so uh, let me go on. If the MC is determined to have 3.78568937%, again, I, I just say it, say it that way, so you know the percentages go out as long as, as far as needed to get down to that last dollar. Um, so if you add another enlisted man, and he has capability and he, he, um, he's going to get paid. You're going to get paid to have that enlisted man. As long as there's capability there. Um, 
if you add another tank and you have 10 tanks and another military corporation has 11 tanks, well, you get part of that budget. He gets part of that budget. And um, the person with 11 tanks get a little bit more than the person with 10 tanks. Uh, but it also depends on the capability of each tank. If they have a old time um, tank versus a new um, high tech tank, there, there's going to be a different capabilities um, built into it. And they can take that into consideration. Um, so, so all the funding adds up to 100%, but 100% of the money, that 5% of GDP is not going to be part of this. It might only be maybe 60%, to be honest with you, of the um, military capabilities because 20% 20, 20 goes into savings automatically. Uh, a certain percentage is going to go into the oversight board, which is going to be very robust. Another percentage is going to, a couple percentage is going to go into the officer core, which is, which is not part of this, but um, they're going to be controlling the officers. Um, so that needs to be having some funding and a couple other things need to have some funding. The, um, some other oversight stuff I have within the rating system, just a lot. Some foreign aid is going to have to come out of that budget too. And obviously, um, we want to reduce down foreign aid significantly, but places like Israel or other places could reach such a level of support in the Congress that, and, um, uh, and need that, um, we might still be doing some foreign aid, but it's going to have to compete with the other budget here. Um, so that's why I say it might be down to 60%. So maybe $600 billion versus the trillion dollars. Trillion dollars is roughly 5% of GDP. So it might be 600 billion, um, something in that, in those, um, general areas there. A distinct representative body with an elected president will be responsible for authorizing with a 70% vote and pulling the authorization with a 40% vote, all military corporations, businesses, and personnel. So these people make sure abuse, corruption does not happen. Plus we have a very similar, um, another representative body, um, called the rating system that's going to do some of the same stuff, taking care of some abuse, corruption. They have different, um, different, a little bit different roles, oh, significantly different roles, but both of them together, um, they both, uh, help root out corruption and, and abuse. Okay. This military authorization agency will safeguard against corruption, abuse, and self-dealing. Again, the rating system will do that. And there's, there's a lot of systems will do that, um, within the system. Okay. Uh, what are we at? 17, 18 minutes now. Everything's at, um, every, you can find everything at Haley2024.org. Please consider a donation to this, um, Haley 2024, the movement. But this is specifically for the, uh, Facebook page. I'm trying to do my best to keep the, um, system separated from all my other reforms. I reform welfare. I reform education. I reform um, how we elect people to the, um, to represent us. I do a lot of reforms. But I'm trying to keep this separate on a separate Facebook page just so we know how we can do um, competitive military. More free enterprise benefits with significantly more societal oversight than even we have right now. Until the next video, and I'm going to try to do a lot of breakdown videos within this. So um, we can spend a little bit more time on each one of these topics. Until the next video.